gut inside your body and your skin that surrounds your body stop you from living a longer and healthier life? Yes, it can. Many of my patients say to me, I can't do anything about it. I can't change my genes. This is what's going to happen. But what if we lived in a world where we could actually influence and shape our genes, not just inherit them? What if we could shape our children's genes? Wouldn't that be wonderful? Is that science fiction? Well, I'm going to tell you, hopefully, how you can biohack your genes to improve your longevity, to improve your health, to improve your wellness. And that's because most of our genes in our body aren't really in our own DNA. So I'm an eyelid plastic surgeon, and I have a passion for safe beauty. So that means I'm very interested in eye health, skin health, and gut health. Now I want you to picture my patient Charlotte. Charlotte is a beautiful, young, world-class musician. And her life was suddenly upended with a condition called thyroid eye disease. She was sitting in front of me in my consultation room in Cambridge University Hospital one day. And she was slumped in her chair and she was sobbing, tears in her eyes. She had her hands covering her eyes. And she said to me in between her sobs, I don't even want to go out of my house I can't even bear to see myself on television. I can't wear the makeup that I used to wear because my eyes are so sore and so sensitive. And worse still, I look like I'm staring at people. I look angry all the time. You see, Charlotte developed this autoimmune condition several months before she came to see me. She had a bad infection in her nose and her sinuses. And she had a lot of stress in her work. And then her body suddenly started to attack her. This is what autoimmune disease is. It attacked her thyroid gland and it attacked her eyes. And she developed this bulgy, wide-eyed, starey eyes, which were sore all the time. Now, over the 10 years in Cambridge, I saw hundreds of patients and a lot of them with thyroid eye disease had a similar thread to their story. So it made me wonder, and I dove down this rabbit hole of research and studies to see if there was a common link. And you know what I found? A lot of my patients had infections that had triggered this thyroid eye disease. And at the heart of this is a disrupt in the microbiome. So what is the microbiome? Well, these are trillions of bacteria, viruses, fungi, and they inhabit our gut, our skin, our noses, our mouths, our eyes, our orifices. And they're really important for us because they form the front line you know, the first line of barrier against infections. And you know what? They contain genes. They contain 150 times the amount of genes that we contain in our own DNA. That means they completely eclipse our own genes. So here, maybe we can biohack our genes to improve our health and our longevity, and also possibly, as in Charlotte's case, improve her self-esteem. So for Charlotte, I did something a little bit different from what I would normally have done. 
So normally, I would have treated her with eyelid surgery after I treated her with very strong drugs to suppress her immune system. But in her case, I got her thyroid hormone levels controlled and I decolonized her nose of infection, these bacteria that had decided to set up home in her nose after that infection. And you know what? She got better. So now I see a similar thing in my new practice in London. And it's slightly different, but it follows a similar thread. I see many patients who have dry eye disease, dry sensitive eyes. And I see twice the amount of women as men. Why is that? Okay, I'm going to ask you to just imagine another scenario. It's a Saturday afternoon and a group of teenage girls are in the local drugstore and they're scouring the cosmetic areas, looking at all the cosmetic products. You know, they've watched something on their social media. They've seen their favorite star buy some new product that they're raving about and they want some. Of course they want some. They're giggling and laughing and they're trying the eyeshadows and the colors and the mascaras. Little do they know that there may be some nasties lurking in these products. So the stuff that we put on our skin can also affect the microbiome. The second biggest microbiome is in our skin. And this microbiome communicates with our gut microbiome. There's an intricate dialogue that goes on between the two. And if there's something that disrupts that dialogue, then what happens? You get inflammation. And inflammation in the skin causes redness. Rosacea is a condition that you may have heard of. Rosacea causes redness and flushing of the skin. It can be triggered by drinking wine, eating chocolate, you know, all of those things that we love to have. And it can cause acne-like breakouts and it can cause dry eyes. The skin can feel like it's burning, the eyes can feel like it's burning. Now, I'm going to give you some numbers because rosacea actually happens in one in 10 people. It's quite common. And about 80% of people with rosacea get dry eyes. Again, another big number. So this might go towards explaining why I'm seeing a lot of people with dry eyes. But why is it that women seem to be more prevalent in my practice? Well, remember that there's something going on potentially with cosmetics. So I was involved in a huge study. I was a co-author and we looked at cosmetic ingredients that are in the products that we use on a daily basis, multiple times a day sometimes. And some of these ingredients may have been checked for safety, but what does that mean? Safety in the body? It's definitely not checked for safety in the eyes. And there's very little regulation. So that means that things that go into cosmetics that you commonly use hasn't probably been regulated. There's very few ingredients that have been banned. And there are ingredients in your products that are a thousand times greater in concentration than what can cause damage to the eyes, but it's allowed to be in your cosmetics. That's pretty, pretty awful. So that means your ingredients could be toxic to your eyes. They're definitely lethal to your microbiome. So what's that going to do? It's going to cause inflammation. And inflammation is going to cause disease. And disease is going to reduce your longevity. So how can we biohack? Because I promised you that we'll be able to biohack. How can we biohack our longevity, our health, our wellness? Well, I'm going to give you five quick tips. 
Remember our microbiome in the gut is like a rainforest. It's nourishing us and it needs to be protected. So one, think about targeted probiotics. There is a bacteria, good bacteria, that can, you can add to your natural rainforest. Two, increase your fiber intake. Fiber is a prebiotic. So it's like the soil for your probiotics, it's the soil for your rainforest. Prebiotics are in things like vegetables, fruits, whole grains. Think about safe beauty. What does that mean? Look at the products that you're using. Turn it around. Read the ingredients. They might read like a foreign language, but there are apps where you can actually decipher them. And try and look out for things that are endocrine disruptors. Did you know that 55% of girls aged between 12 to 14 use mascara? So products are being used at an earlier and earlier age. And it's not just females. Boys are starting to use skincare. And the male grooming and skincare industry is booming. So look out for things like parabens, phthalates. They are in a lot of products that you use on a daily basis, in shampoos, in conditioner, in skincare, in fragrances. And they can disrupt hormones. That can lead to nasty cancers. It can lead in male children for breast tissue to grow. It's not something you want. Four, look out for products that contain formaldehyde. Formaldehyde and formaldehyde releasing compounds are in a lot of eye care products. It's a preservative in mascaras, many mascaras. Some of you may have heard about formaldehyde because it's what we used when we were in the dissection lab to preserve our anatomy specimens. But this is the stuff that goes into our mascaras. You don't want to be using that near your eyes because it can damage those delicate oil glands in the eyelids. And those oil glands are really important because they nourish the surface of the eye. Five. Five, look at products that contain phytoestrogens. Phytoestrogens are products you don't want to be using near the eyes because dry eyes actually gets worse as we get older. And it's due to a drop in testosterone in men and women. Women have less testosterone than men, so maybe that's why women have dry eyes earlier. Don't use phytoestrogens near your eyes because that's going to worsen dry eyes. So, we want to have a healthy hormone balance. If we want to live longer and have healthy aging. So let's just go back to the gut once more because the gut is really important for our hormone balance. And one last fact about the gut, it produces 90% of the serotonin, the microbiome, produces serotonin, which is the happy hormone, the happy neurotransmitter. So I would like to invite you all to consider using safe nutrition choices and safe beauty choices so that you can all live longer, healthier, better looking, and happier lives. Thank you.